Hi, my name is Jonathan Hopp. This is 10 Minute Go, and we're going to get started today by moving on to the 19 by 19 board. The lesson will start now. All right, so the 19 by 19 board can look a little bit intimidating to some beginning players, but don't let it. It's exactly the same game. Go doesn't change. It's not like there's new rules. All right, you start in the corners, you extend to the sides, you have to watch out to make sure that your groups are alive and not dead. You still have to count liberties, there's still nets and ladders. All the stuff you've learned up until now that we've done on the 9 by 9 board 100% applies to the 19 by 19 board, except that now you have a larger space, so there's a lot more going on. Go is done by learning it by doing. The more you play the games, the more you get experience, the more your brain kind of learns these different scenarios. So just like in the 9 by 9 board, you know, you probably got remember when you got caught up in your first ladder. And then you also remember when you stop doing it, all right, when you start to read ladders out and you stop doing it. There's all sorts of things in Go like that, where you just, you learn from mistakes, you learn from the situation, and then you stop doing it. And over time, you shed all the mistakes, and you'll get really close to the better moves, okay? And that's what you're looking for. You're looking for the better moves in any given situation. Now, here's how you can start off the game, all right? We're going to start off in the corner, but now you have to kind of think to yourself that your move has a meaning to it, all right? It's not just taking the corner, it's how you want to take the corner, all right? And this will decide the flow of the game. So, for example, you could start off in any one of these spaces, one, two, three, or four. Again, any other move you want to play is perfectly fine. Any empty space, as long as you follow the rules of the game, it doesn't matter where you play. I'm suggesting these five points because they're a lot easier, and you'll see them a lot in stronger people's players' games. You'll see them in magazines, you'll see them on a professional game. And so if you're familiar with them, it can help you in your own game. Let's talk about number one first. Number one is a low move. Okay, what I mean by low is it's one, two, three, three spaces from the closest edge. All right, which basically means it's low. Two and one will also be low moves. Low moves want territory. Okay, what I mean by that is you want to quickly enclose territory space and get those points. In exchange, you are going to give up outside influence. Your opponent will build a wall outside your stones. One of the cool things about Go is that it's all about sort of exchanges. I get one thing, you get another. Black gets territory, white gets outside influence. Okay, now black's territory is pretty cool, right? This corner is all blacks. Okay, white is not going to invade here. Okay, this is dead. Okay, this is dead. I think you play enough 9x9 nine nine games to know that this move is just dead on arrival. So that is black's territory. White, however, has this nice big wall, and this center is not claimed by anybody just yet. This could be very useful to have an outside wall, either to make territory or to attack a group. So if you're okay with that, then by all means, black can take this territory and feel perfectly leg legitimate doing that. So you can't get both, though. You're not going to get territory and outside influence. Another low move you can play is here, the 3-4 um, uh, th uh, point right here. Uh, this is called komoku, although I will use a 3-4 point because I like to use English terms rather than Japanese terms, but if you hear someone say komoku, this is what they mean. Okay, this move is kind of cool because with one more move, you could add a move like this, and now you have a corner enclosure, okay, called shimari in Japanese, which you'll hear some people say, but corner enclosure makes sense. And now this is all yours, okay? This is all yours. Let's look like the price is right. Right, this is all your territory. This little box right here is yours, okay, barring something horrible happening. So it's called wheel jiao in, uh, in Chinese because it's the corner without any worries. All right, this is very strong. With just two moves, you've officially taken the corner. Maybe you don't like playing the low move. Maybe you like playing high like this. This also works. Okay, maybe you like playing a little bit faster. This also works. Okay, this is all sorts of things you can do and go. Okay, there's not just one move. If you like flexibility, you'll play the star point, the 4-4 point, or hoshi stone in Japanese. Okay, the 4-4 point says, mm, maybe I'll take the corner, maybe I'll look towards the side. All right, I haven't really decided yet. It depends on what my opponent does. So it's a very flexible move. So you might, you know, end up playing something like this, in which case you divide the corner up in half and you extend along the top. That's perfectly fine. You could make yourself go higher. You could take the entire top side if you wanted to. I mean, there's all sorts of things you could do. You may even have a game like this, where you play all star points, and then you decide to make a framework on the right side of the board. The 4-4 four, four point is a wonderfully flexible move, but the problem is that later, maybe your opponent wants to play the 3-3 three, three point. If he comes in, you can't kill him. But maybe you don't care. Okay, Again, 
territory for influence. That's a common exchange. You'll see a lot in Go, so kind of just get used to it. When you play the 4-4 point, you have that already in mind. If the top is important to you, if you don't like the, if you don't think that the low move is good, you don't really want the flexibility, play towards the top. This move says, listen, white can play here. Okay, white plays here, I press him down. Okay, or something to that effect. If white plays here, I can play like this. But the top is really what's important to me. Okay, you can also play high, which also means that the top is important to you, and you don't really care so much if white invades here or white comes in here. Okay, this move is looking this direction, not in the other direction. If you wanted the other direction, you should have played it. All right, so if you want something, play there in the beginning. It's, there's nothing worse in Go than playing a move, and then maybe down the road, you know, maybe it's five or six moves later, all of a sudden the situation has not gone the way you want it to. When you make a move, it has long-lasting repercussions. Moves you make in the very beginning will have an effect 50, 60, 70 moves down the road. This, game, this is why this game is so complicated. This is why this game has such subtle strategy. Every move counts. You can't move with stone unless it's being captured, so you need to decide in the beginning what is your strategy. All right, and so that's why I'm going over these. Now, don't again, you don't have to play any of these. You want to play here? Go for it. There are professional games where people play straight and smack dab in the middle. It's a much harder game. You don't have a corner. You're not starting off in the corner with, with points. You're saying you want to fight. Okay, and if you like fighting and you can read out ladders and you know a lot of standard sequences, I say go for it. I love playing in the center point. If you don't like that, if you like to play like this on the 5-5 five, five point, maybe you've seen Hikaru no Go, play on the 5-5 five, five point. Go for it. This means, however, that you don't really care if white takes the inside part. You don't really care if white plays things like this. All right? You're saying that the center is important to you. There's a professional player, Cho Wu, who plays in Japan. Actually, his name is Zhang Xu, and he plays... You know, like this. He play it on the on the large nice move from the star point. He has played many professional games. He's even won some. Where they, some of his games look something like this. I mean, it looks crazy at first, but you know what? He makes it work and he likes it. So there's nothing to say that you have to play any of these five moves as long as you understand that your what job is your stone doing when you put it on the board. All right. And again, games will probably flow like this. Each player will take corners in turn, and then what will happen is you'll start to approach different corners, all right? You'll start to say, okay, listen, the bottom, I want the bottom. Is the bottom your territory? Absolutely not. You only have three stones here. You can't say it, but what you're doing is you're slowly building stone by stone, brick by brick, what you want in the future, where, at, where each stone has its own job. So you need to be thinking, this is why you need to be thinking, what is your overall strategy? What final shape do you want? what weaknesses are there in the final shape, right? So you can't just be putting stones down on the board anymore. You have to be thinking long term. And as you play more and get more experience, you'll be able to do it. That's why playing, especially at the beginner, is such an important thing to be doing. The more experience you have, the more of these shapes you'll know and the more experience you'll be able to get, all right? So this, that's where this makes this game a lot of fun, all right? So remember, start off in the corner, pick any of these five points that you want and play a lot of 19 by 19 games. Don't get stuck in one area. Try to take as much territory and keep in mind what strategy you had for the stone when you put it on the board. All right, that's it for today, and I'll see you next time.